Hey guys! Oh, before I start that, we're, the camera's up there, okay? okay. <laughs> Sometimes people look there and it looks a bit weird. Hey guys, welcome back to the Circular Podcast. Today I'm with Youssef from Peterborough. He's a zoologist, an aspiring film, wildlife... Filmmaking, making, presenting... Presenter. That kind of thing, yeah. Um, mate, why, why zoology? What got you into it? Tell us a little zoology. bit about the background. <laughs> Alright, that's a very good question. Um, so basically, I've loved animals my whole life, um, ever, from ever since I can remember. Always liked animals. Um, a lot of people are like that. Um, but for me, it was something more. There was sort of a passion. Um, so I, I just knew I really wanted to do it. So when I was about four years old, I visited this zoo with my family in Spain, actually. Um, it was a crocodile, crocodile zoo, and I held my first crocodile. And I think it was a bit overwhelming for me. I got a bit emotional. I cried, I think. Um, but for me, that was like the first moment where I knew I wanted to work with these amazing animals that we have on our planet mm -hmm. and do something important. Right. So in a sense, I learned about conservation and wildlife from a very young age. And then I kind of just followed it through and eventually got to zoology. And kind of you felt that that was, that was yeah, pulling just, you in? Yeah, felt like the right thing to do. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, how was the, the studying of zoology? Was it, was it in depth? Did you find it was fun? Um, a bit of both. So, yeah. I, obviously, zoology is a subject you do because you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of subjects, people do it to get a career out of it. And don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, everyone does zoology wants a career in zoology. But it's a subject that everyone who's doing it is really passionate about. Yeah. So, when you're doing that, it, it makes it a bit easier, makes it a bit more fun. Um, but it is a very intense course. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. you're learning about all um, the entire animal kingdom. So, yeah. there's a lot of animals to learn about. Everything from like periphera, which are sponges in the ocean to mammals, um, all, you do all the phyla. Um, so it's very in-depth, but it's also quite broad because you're covering a lot of things. Okay. Um, that can make it a bit challenging to decide what you want to do afterwards yeah. because you've done so much, you think, right, I enjoyed this and I enjoyed that, but which one should I do? So it's, cool. a, it's good, but it makes it a bit challenging. Well, one thing we talked about today was the, the, the word zoology. When you mentioned that you're, you're a zoologist <laughs> or graduated yeah. zoologist yeah. and that you're going into that path, um, the first thing that pops up is, is zoos. Zoos, yeah. So, <laughs> so the, the first thing a lot of people think is, ah, oh, so you want to work in a zoo. Exactly. Um, tell us a little bit about that because um, I think there's going to be a lot of people that are thinking yeah, zoology. Um, and I guess it's in the name really, zoology, zoos. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of people ask me what I do or when I was at uni they say, oh, what subject do you do? I say, like, zoology. Oh, cool, you want to be a zookeeper? I'm like, I, I do, but that's not the only thing you can do. So okay. at the moment I am a zookeeper, um, which is... Um, so, like I say, something I'm doing now, but there is a, it's a very broad subject. So yeah. you can go into ecology, you can mm -hmm. go into conservation, which is what I want to get more involved in. Okay. Um, but you can even in those areas, you can then specialise. So you can do entomology, which is like insects. You can mm -hmm. do mammalogy, ornithology, herpetology. Yeah, there's lots wow. of different. So you really can go into so many. Yeah. Different. It's yeah. not just about zoos. No. There's no, no, no yeah. Um, okay. So while we're talking about the zoos, let's have a kind of a little discussion on that. Um, okay. You currently work at a zoo. Uh, I do, what yeah. if, Why do you work at the zoo? And give us a background about what the zoo does. Um, okay. I'm leading on towards the kind of the ethical point of yeah, uh, the zoos. Yeah, the zoo debate. So the zoo I work at is 90% um, of the animals there are rescued from the pet trade. So we don't have like lions and tigers, things mm -hmm. like that. We have um, smaller mammals, so raccoons, meerkats. Mm -hmm. So it's still quite interesting. And these are the animals that people have had as pets, which they shouldn't have done. Um, and then, yeah, they can't look after them, so they give them to us. Okay. Um, originally, the zoo I worked at started off just bugs, um, mm -hmm. and then evolved to had reptiles, mm -hmm. now we've got small mammals, um, so lots, lots of different things. And um, we've got about 90 species of wow. different animals, so it's just a small zoo, but it's, yeah. it gives me experience working with animals. Yeah. It's always good to put on your CV, um, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And, and your experience with animals, is there, has there been any a time that's and I've been one that you like some some moment with an animal that you've just it's really been and uh, you couldn't forget that moment that was so so special or interesting funny or. for me um the best like wildlife experience I've had um saw my in my degree went to South Africa on a field trip okay uh, which was really cool in itself loads of cool animals but the best thing we saw was a serval cat hunting and um we were staying with a ranger in Kruger National Park and um, I managed to get a clip of it on my camera. It was all shaky, it was terrible footage, but yeah. it was a clip. And um, I showed it to her and she was saying she'd only seen, I think it was three servals in the last six years she'd been living there. Wow. And we saw you one. You guys got to see it. Yeah, we got to see it That's hunting incredible. as well, which is wow. like a really cool behavior as it jumps up and hunts. That must make it all kind of worth it. You go for all that studying and then you get to 
have these interesting experiences. Definitely, these, yeah. These, yeah. These, yeah. These. Lots of interesting stories to tell, and wow. it's a cool, cool subject to yeah, study. Yeah. I think, anyway. And lots of interesting. With the, and sorry, guys, for the noise. Uh, we've, this is the only kind of park area that we could find that was going to be worth uh, sitting at. We had to get this done today. So, um, okay. Um, that that connection with the animals that you've got with it, that that love the that you've built through these animals over time. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel that zoology, the the study of zoology, it really brings you and connects you closer to the animals? And um, do you feel that if you didn't study this, there would be a way that you could move your passion and the, the direction that you want to go with filmmaking? And uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you don't have to study zoology if you want to be a filmmaker or wildlife yeah. filmmaker. Yeah. Um, there are other ways into it. It's, it's mainly about the experience. You have to get the experience mm -hmm. to do it, like most things. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say zoology is a very good route into it because you need the understanding of the animals. That's, so with filmmaking, for example, if you want to get a certain shot, you have to understand the animal's behavior yep. and what it's going to do. You have to be able to predict what it's going to do, be in the right place at the right time. So I think if you've got a background in zoology, you know, even if it's not a degree, even if you've done some courses or something, yeah. something to give you a bit, a bit of an extra um, benefit, um, and then you, you it just gives, it helps really, doesn't it? So Absolutely, you know exactly yeah, yeah. what you're doing. So I think it does definitely help. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, there's lots of different things you can do with zoology. So, sure, sure. So it's and you personally, you've actually, I've, I've seen some of your videos where you're getting up at silly o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And uh, in order to capture these moments. Mm -hmm. Now, now what's that like? What gives you the the motivation to get up at what, four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning in order, or, or yeah, tell me what yeah. time, in order yeah, to go and get really, these, uh, yeah. get these moments, um, like, it's pretty special to... It to is very them. special, I mean, I think the one you're referring to is the Dawn Chorus one, isn't it, where I went out to... That's right, yeah. Yeah, so, um, it's just, it's very nice to be out with nature, you know, when it's that early in the morning, there's nobody else around at all, you're on your own, and there's no traffic noise, there's no other noise pollution so it's very peaceful yeah. and you're engaging with wildlife and nature mm -hmm. which is something I really encourage people to do you know yeah. um, so even if you don't have a background in zoology like me um, still go out there engage with nature it's very healthy it's good for mental health as well um, but yeah when you go out this early like I said there's no one else around it's very peaceful and the animals act in I don't want to say a different way but they're, yeah. they're acting in a more natural way because yeah. they're not being disturbed by okay. humans um, obviously I'm there, they know I'm there, so they are, yeah. they are acting a bit differently, but yeah, I, I find it's a nice peaceful and, and, thing. And you being there, do you think that you, you, by you being there and they know that you're there, like you just mentioned, it's, um, they understand that you're, you're not really causing any, any threat, you're just kind of there and they accept it after so. time? Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, these places I go to are nature reserves, so they're, they're used to humans, um, yeah. and, you, and you don't, with wild animals, you don't get right up close to them anyway, yeah. they have sort of their, their safe distance, yeah. and if you were to intrude on that, they would fly away if it's mm -hmm. a bird or run away or whatever. Yeah. So I think they do get used to humans over the time, um, and also they just get on with their lives. So. Yeah. <laughs> I don't That's know that first, yeah. And um, the, the current like wildlife population, everything that we've got here in the UK, because mm -hmm. you've done a lot of work here in the UK, yeah. um, What's the what's your kind of outlook on what, what our current situation with the the population of wildlife and how we're we going? I mean, with all the big topics of uh, mm -hmm. climate change and destruction yeah, of habitats, yeah. like, where do you see like our part in it and how we we go in? Do you think? Um, I mean, for us in the UK, it's a bit different to many countries. We don't really have poaching like you do in Africa, and mm -hmm. um, but we have different problems. So, I mean, my dissertation was. Um, looking into hedgehogs specifically mm -hmm. so um, the thing I looked into was how urban developments urban areas are affecting their yeah. habitats yeah. so people come into their original habitats they build these houses they put up fences yeah. but they're not thinking about the effects it has on the wildlife mm -hmm. so hedgehogs for example um, when you're putting up all these fences and physical barriers you're mm -hmm. fragmenting the habitat so a lot of the time it's not just about habitat loss mm -hmm. it's about fragmenting it so you're, you're like say you put in physical barriers there yeah. so they can't um, find food, they can't find mates, um, and also it forces them into unnatural areas. So a lot of the time with hedgehogs, um, because there was these barriers, they were forced to cross roads, so they got more road traffic accidents with hedgehogs. Um, so what I was really, really looking into was the willingness of people to make a change, do something about it. Um, so what we was trying to encourage is to get people to make small holes in their fences, okay. just at ground level, so it, it creates a path for hedgehogs to move through. Okay. And then they can get on with the natural behaviours, and so we can live together in that sense. So we can do our thing, they can do their thing, and they can still get on with So something as simple as mini solutions like this, and, and mm -hmm. just understanding the way they work, and the way they live, and how, and how they need to travel. Yeah. Just understanding that and making small things just like 
a cut in the bottom of your fence. So exactly, yeah. It can be sort of really simple, and it can have a big impact. So wow. yeah, I think that's a good example of that kind of thing. Um, wow, and also, it's just educating people because yeah. I mean, years ago, people would give hedgehogs milk, and they lactose intolerant. So you have to sort of um, educate people who they don't necessarily do it because they don't know what they're doing. They just haven't yeah. they haven't had that information given to them. So yeah. if you say, oh, that hedgehog is a la lactose intolerant, they're going to say, okay, I'll provide them water instead. So it's just little things like that. They can so, so providing more education and awareness to exactly. their, their whereabouts. Because yeah, yeah. I think most people, they do, you know, I think naturally we do we do care. Yeah. I think yeah. we just lost that kind of connection somewhere along the line. Yeah, definitely. So I think, like you mentioned about collection. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the church, Sean. You guys will get through this. We'll talk louder. <laughs> Oh man, that's brilliant. Well, oh, we got a bit. All right, we're going to pause it, come back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll just skip this bit. Yeah. It's not like a little long anyway. How are we doing? Are we still on record? Yeah, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Cool. Pretty good. Anything you want to touch on or mention as we're going through? Uh, no, I mean, it's up to you really. You can talk about like, the whole zoo debate thing a bit more if you want yeah, to. Yeah, I was going to um, bring back we can on it. Get back to that and um, <coughs> you know, whatever you want to mention. Ants, okay. squirrels, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why squirrels again? We got the invasive, invasive oh, yeah. species and all that. We don't have to, but if that's yeah, yeah. Yeah. okay, so we're back. <laughs> so um, amazing, cool, great. Let's go back to the the zoos okay. and the debate we've got with zoos at the moment. Yeah. Um, what's your, what's your outlook on it? Obviously, you've you've thought about it before. You've seen the subject. I have, yeah, it's a it's a very big topic. It's mm -hmm. definitely not a black and white topic. There's a lot of factors involved. And um, me being a zookeeper, I think it'd be a bit hypocritical of me to say I'm totally against zoos mm -hmm. um, but I do have an understanding of um, why they're good and why they're bad so there's mm -hmm. lots of pros and cons so I mean pros so there's two main pros the first one is education yeah. so obviously zoos do do a lot of education and so many conservationists and zoologists and biologists say that their first sort of spark that got them sort of interested in it was by visiting a zoo okay. so they do have some place um, in that sort of sense, but you, you have to balance. Is, is it worth? Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? Um, yeah. But it's not just visitors to zoos. Zoos do go out to things like schools, um, and yeah. community centres. They do a lot of work for communities as well. And um, obviously, this is reputable zoos we're talking about. There are yeah. lots of other zoos who aren't so great, which is mm -hmm. I think is the problem. Yeah. Um, but yes, there's the education side of it, and uh, a lot of people set, talk about yeah. inspiring the future generation and the children, which is great, we have to yeah. do that. But I think we also have to work with adults as well because they're the ones that are having the biggest impact on the planet at the moment. Right. You know, they're making all the decisions. And um, so I think it's good to do both. You have to right. inspire the kids, we need future conservationists, but you also want to educate the adults and tell them, you know, Absolutely. why you shouldn't do certain things and why you should. So, so what's a reputable zoo? Um, um, a lot of people think, okay, great, but how do I know which is which is so weird. there are certain zoos um, which are members of an association called the British uh, Institute, I think, of Aquariums and Zoos, something like okay. BRs, or I think it's called. Uh, but you can, yeah, you can look that up. And any member of that has to go by certain regulations. Okay. I mean, by law anyway, there are certain regulations that every zoo has to do, yeah. um, to do with the animal welfare and that. Um, but yeah, these guys are the big ones, like London Zoo, Chester Zoo, all the big ones will be mm -hmm. part of this um, group. And to be a member of that, really, they have to have some kind of um, impact on conservation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not, you know, it's not all black and white, but um, a lot of these zoos go out and do um, in situ conservation, which is like conservation on site in the country of origin, whatever animals this yeah. is. Um, for example, like um, mountain gorillas in the cloud forests of Uganda. Okay. Yeah. So they go out there and do it out there. Um, but then on the flip side, there's also ex situ conservation, mm -hmm. which is where you conserve an animal in a zoo. And well, this is where zoos mainly come into play. Um, obviously, in an ideal world, you'd always conserve animals where they are. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, um, things like poaching and habitat loss, you can't always do that. Mm -hmm. So that's where zoos come into play, like I say, yeah. um, and the animals come over. Uh, a good example of that is the Chevalsky's horse. I don't know if you've heard of it, but um, it's a type of horse. It's the only horse that was never domesticated. Okay. So it's quite an interesting species. Um, but I think it's like in the 1940s or something, they brought about 13 individuals into a zoo. Right. Um, by 1966, they were completely extinct in the wild. Wow. So if they hadn't had that backup population, it mm -hmm. wouldn't be around anymore. Do you, do you think that by having them in the zoos now, that plays a part in the future, like rewilding them in the future? Or is it just to kind of preserve them so that we can continue to um, have them on the planet? I think it's definitely the aim of these zoos to, like you say, to release them back mm -hmm. into the wild. Uh, in some cases, 
this can be done. Yeah. In a lot of cases, it's a lot more difficult because they become used to humans. They rely yeah. on us. They there's dependencies created. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that is their aim. Right. Uh, but there's a bit of both because we do. I mean, we've got to remember zoos are a recreational facility. You know, they they attract visitors. That's how they make the money. So they do have to have those animals in the zoo to attract the people. Right. So this is where it sort of gets a bit. Um, yeah. Complicated for. Do you for think all, all of these? Do you think the zoos that are, the, the reputable zoos that are doing the good work, do you think that they should be 100% just, you know, the, the not animals that are fine, they, they don't have any extinction um, crisis or anything? Do you think it should just be 100% animals that have been brought from... Endang that endangered species? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, in an ideal world, that's what it would right. be. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these endangered species are things like um, a little species of frog or something that nobody right. really cares about. Mm -hmm. um, and on the flip side you've got like meerkats and things which everyone mm -hmm. loves and they're not endangered so if you have meerkats in your zoo it's yeah. going to bring people in yeah. and then you can teach them about these smaller less well known but more important yeah. in a conservation sense animals um, which again is, is mm -hmm. that right or wrong yeah. that's, this is the trouble so for the, for, for the meerkats so let's, let's look at the, the average zoo a lot of them are living in habitats that are much smaller mm -hmm. a lot of the time than what yeah. they should be in yeah. Um, yeah I guess we've got that ethical point of like you know, even if we're treating the meerkats right, they, you know, they should be in a, a bigger habitat, mm -hmm. and we are yeah. you know, putting them there because yeah. we want them there Definitely. for a better cause. Now, going back to that extinction, do you think we should, if 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 they've been extinct out in the wild, to to put them into the zoos? Do you not think it would be better to just let them go extinct on their own naturally? Now, obviously, looking at it a lot of the time it is caused by ourselves. This is a trouble, yeah. Um, but at the same time, maybe because we caused it, we should take the responsibility of trying to save them and rewild them in the future. Yeah, I mean, that's a very good question. That is a lot of people's opinion. Um, but um, in my opinion, because we caused it, we should be doing okay. something to reverse that. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, an example of this is the giant pandas. They sort of caused themselves to go a bit extinct, didn't they? <laughs> and that's quite a sort of famous conservation, um, conservation debate there. How do they do that? Um, they're just really rubbish at survival. Right. <laughs> um, so we sort of interve intervened and now they're doing pretty well. Right. Um, so there was a sort of a debate there whether or not we should do something about it because they sort of did it themselves. And before we existed, there was thousands, millions of species that mm -hmm. went extinct um, right. because that's the natural cycle. We will go yeah. extinct one day just like everything else will. Um, so there is that debate whether we should be intervening or not. And I don't feel there's any really right or wrong answer. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's a very hard topic to yeah. come up with a Because we've got answer. sanctuaries as well, right? And lots of places there are sanctuaries which yeah, yeah. a lot of the time are mm -hmm. focused directly on, on just preserving the... Well, uh, taking the, the injured animals and yeah. looking after them. Yeah, and definitely. And if possible, yeah. taking them back. And that's ideal, but how yeah. do they get the money? This is, this is where okay. zoos come into it. Yeah. Zoos get their money from visitors, yeah. um, which isn't ideal because it creates conflict between visitors and animals. Yeah. I mean, you've got the whole um, Harambe situation where a child went in the enclosure and the gorilla got shot. Right. So, obviously, if he wasn't there in the first place, that situation wouldn't have occurred. Yeah. But if that didn't happen, then gorillas might be going extinct. Well, they are going extinct in the wild. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's sort of the balance between the two. Okay. It's, That's it's, really interesting. Yeah. Really interesting. It's, a, it's a difficult... So, you are, would you say, four zoos if they're going in the best possible yeah. way? Yeah, as long as they are. The animals? Yeah, I would say that. Um, I think, I mean, zoos used to be... I mean, not that long ago, there used to be enclosures where it'd be concrete boxes with steel bars yeah. um, and no one really thought anything of it. Yeah. And now if we saw that, we'd be absolutely disgusted. So yeah. I think zoos, zoos are constantly evolving. The good ones are trying to mimic the habitat, the wild habitats of these animals mm -hmm. as best they can. I right. don't think they'll ever be able to fully achieve it because yeah. there's some things that just are not yeah. achievable. Um, but unfortunately, I think they're a necessary evil because yeah. of the way we're... Sort of so do you think them. people can... Let's say if we if we're looking to bring zoos and we're looking to help them become as let's say as ethical as it mm -hmm. can be and, and and as and doing as much good as possible, we can get involved by raising our voices and saying, hey, look, we need to make it as you know make these habitats as good as possible if they are in the zoos and, yeah. and focus directly yeah. on. I think so. As good as because we can. like I said, zoos it's all well and good breeding these animals, these endangered animals, and hoping to release them back into the wild. Yeah. But what's the point if they've got no habitat to go back to? Yeah. So I think we should be putting more effort into protecting these habitats rather than always focusing on the zoos themselves. They right. do great work and everything, but I think the, the main area of focus should be their original habitat. Because yes. if you're going to, like I say, breed them to send them back, they're going to need somewhere to live. Yeah. So, And if you're just going to take them out, and breed them, and destroy their habitat, yeah. then what are you going to do? So I think that's the problem we've got at the moment. 
Um, and conservation, and think I know you do a lot of plastic pollution. That it's becoming a lot bigger in the media, and mm -hmm. more people are coming aware. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still not enough being done, in my yeah. opinion. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Talking about the the, the, the habitats and, and, and rewilding and all this, the uh, the the grey squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the what's the current situation on grey squirrels? Is there any chance that we can? You know, with red squirrels, we've got still a population of red squirrels more in the north. We do, yeah. Yeah. Them, right? um, I, mean, I know, don't know as much as what. Okay, yeah. Know. I mean, it's a very again, it's a difficult um, topic because yeah. we bought red, we bought grey squirrels here, and uh, I don't know how much you know about, them, but they spread their squirrel pox disease. They outcompeted them for food, for habitat, so they really destroyed our red squirrel population. Yeah. Um, and now, like you say, we have got isolated populations of red squirrels mm -hmm. in places like Scotland and up north. Um, but now, the majority of the country, we have grey squirrels. Yeah. So, one thing we can do is kill all the grey squirrels yep. to bring, to well, get rid of their competitors and bring back the reds. Mm -hmm. But then we've got that mor moral sort of kill dilemma them. again. Yeah. Is it, we introduced them, so is it right that now we're going to kill them? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it, again, it's a very difficult one. Yeah. I personally, it's a, it's a very difficult situation. I, in an ideal world, they wouldn't have been brought over in the first place. Yeah. So I think whoever did that, that was their mistake. Um, but I personally don't feel right about killing greys. Yeah. But then on the flip side, I do see the... Like, the, the only way we're currently the, preserving yeah. the, the life of the red squirrels is through conserving yeah, them. Yeah, conserving and, and them. Yeah, yeah. So, Interesting. And that's, that's not just with squirrels. I mean, in places like Florida at the moment, they've yeah. got a huge problem with um, invasive species, things like Burmese pythons, mm -hmm. green iguanas, because people have them as pets. They don't know how to look after them properly. They don't realize they're going to live so long, grow yeah. so big. They just release them. Florida is obviously a nice, warm place. It's yeah. a great climate for these animals to survive. And now they're thriving. They destroy all the natural wildlife, a bit like the greys did with the red squirrels. Um, so it's not just a problem that's isolated to this country. It is around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a problem that doesn't get talked about a lot, I feel, in yeah. conservation. Um, so really revert all the way back to you know the education, being yeah, aware of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You think there's enough? I mean, it sounds like there's definitely. It seems there's definitely not enough um, education going about, especially at, at at school from a young age. Yeah, yeah. Um, so definitely, we need a lot, a lot more of that, and making so. people aware. Definitely. But also, like, we we talk about that, saying, "Oh, we need better education." Like, is it, you think that we can bring this about without waiting for the system to change and the education to change? We can raise a voice and we can get involved with different communities and platforms and. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think that must be the the, the short term, the quick way yeah. in to. Uh, yeah, I agree. Definitely. Involved. Whatever. Well, I mean, whatever you can do, obviously, is better yeah. than nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, whoever. Like, the more people get involved, the better. Obviously, yeah. the more people out there that are educating people, and then the people that are educated can go on to educate more people. Yeah. So I think it is a bit of a cycle. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I think that's the best way to do it. I agree. Nice. Yeah. Um, what about like with all the the big topic that's currently around with climate change and mm -hmm. pollution and everything. We've got a lot going around on the media yeah. um, about veganism mm -hmm. and that being something that's also, you know, directly related with the the, the planet, the, yeah. the animals, the ethical purpose. Yeah, yeah, um, you're right. What's your, what's your outlook on it? I don't want to go... On veganism? Uh, um, yeah. I mean, I'm, no, I'm for it. I mean, I'm not a vegan myself. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to reduce my meat consumption and I, I yeah. think the best way to do things is take small steps and gradually get yeah, there yeah, rather yeah. than just rush into something and like I said to you before it becomes a fad and then you sort of fall out of it and go Absolutely, and eat meat again yeah. so I think yeah because it's all about changing the lifestyle and I mean I think like a lot of people who did some sort of biological science or environmental science yeah um, I graduated and thought great this is amazing I know all this information I can go out and change the world yeah. save the planet um, and then you look at yourself and you think, hang on, I'm not living as sustainably as I thought I was. Yeah. You know, there's things to do. So I think, yeah, I think it's about making these small changes. Um, a lot of small changes can mm -hmm. make a big impact, I think. So. Do, do you think if, if, if we start, let's say, pushing towards, or at least considering veganism and, and, and adopting a vegan lifestyle, that we'll be able to find a way to connect more with the nature as well by not, let's say, not eating them and not, not Quite e possibly, exploiting yeah, them? Quite yeah, yeah. Because yeah, obviously it's not just about the food, it's about the... Um, the, the use Welfare of animals and for medicine and, mm -hmm. and, and, and in general the uh, the rights that animals have yeah speciesism and everything yeah like that. I mean I, I agree it's, again it's a very difficult it is, yeah, topic yeah. area yeah. Um, but like you said about laboratory animals so yeah. um, I'm obviously against all animals being used in labs for clinical sure. um, like not clinical um, what's the word like um, makeup 
cosmetic. There's, there's there we go, there cosmetic we go. purposes. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I was in the cosmos while you were trying <laughs> to find it. That's right. So I'm against them being used for cosmetic purposes. Obviously, I think most people are. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to like medicinal things, um, again, this is, I'm sort of on the fence about it. I do think we shouldn't be using. I don't think we should be using these animals mm-hmm. at all. But then, if you think about it, what if someone you know was diagnosed with this illness and they could have done something? To, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it's a bit like it's a difficult one. Um, I think it needs to be again there needs to be tight regulations yeah. um, there are regulations in place already for any sort of animal establishment so you've got the five freedoms so you've got freedom from hunger and thirst um, freedom from fear freedom from um, distress and to freedom to show natural behaviours yeah. is another one <laughs> so there are sort of certain um, laws and regulations in place yeah. but they are really are the bare minimum so I think we need to be doing more Absolutely. Whatever, if we're talking laboratory animals or zoos, whatever it is, there needs yeah. to be more in place to make sure the animal welfare is the best we can do. Right, that's my opinion. I agree. No, yeah. no, no. We definitely got to start pushing yeah. towards something in order to uh, tweak that. Do you see a future where animals and humans are, are thriving together in, in harmony? And I think so. Peace? I like to look at the positive side of things. Yeah. Um, if you get too negative about things, it can really get you down and yeah. you become a bit sick of it. Um, so I, th- I think we definitely can. We're on the right path now. Yeah. The, like I say, people are becoming more aware. The media is covering it a lot more, especially mm-hmm. like the plastic pollution and um, a lot of the marine life that's being harmed by plastic pollution. is Now become, we're becoming more aware of it. So yeah. I think we're definitely along the right lines. Yeah. I think now is a time where we actually need to start doing things and making sure we reverse or at least do something about those things Agreed. we have been doing. I, agree. I think yeah, I think that's the way we're going. Cool. I like the the optimism about that. I think yeah, uh, yeah. if you lose all hope and say, "Hey, no, it's already gone. And humans are going to be extinct." This, this, then exactly. I think you already write off the chance that it may, it yeah. may still, it may still be out of work. You need to keep optimistic. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Oh man, well, it's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, no, good um, to be here. How can people find you if they want to get in touch? Um, you can. I've actually just been making a website, so you can okay. head over to my website. Uh, it's still. It's mostly complete. It's still got a few pages to sort out and everything. But if you want to head to that, it's yousefrafiq.com. Um, if you want to find me on Instagram or YouTube, it's the Zoology Guy. Fantastic. Right. Thank well, thanks for watching, guys. Sorry about the, the quality. We were looking around for ages in order to get um, a, a nice uh, lighting and everything. But you know, invest in a tripod next and a camera. <laughs> so thanks a lot, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a comment. Check out some of the other podcasts. And if you're interested in coming on and having a chat, then give us a shout. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.